All right, so our first conversation, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission has finally presented the report of the review of the Vertical Revenue Allocation Formula to the President. New formula proposes 45.17% for the federal government, 29.79% for states, 21.04% for uh, local governments. Uh, for analysis, we have uh, Paul Alaje, senior economist, SPM professionals, join us on the program. Good morning. Good to have you. Yeah, good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so uh, this uh, proposed formula, we're seeing 45% uh, there for the federal government. What, what are your thoughts on, these, on this? Well, uh, I think it's an improvement from uh, where we're coming from. Our federal government used to have uh, at least 3% higher than what the, the government, the government at the center, would be having now. And uh, that also shows that uh, the federation is thinking of take, I mean, giving more power to the subnationals, the state, and more importantly, local government, where uh, we say that we have most of our people and is the closest government to the people. So I think it's the right decision uh, to take uh, by giving more resources to state, giving more resources even to local government so that our pressure that we have on federal government will significantly reduce. The truth is, I don't think central government alone is sufficient in of to solve enormous problem that our economy is faced with. We therefore need uh, subnational to become responsible. I only hope that as more fund uh, will be given to the subnational, uh, more responsibility we also accompany the subnational even as we have it today. But these uh, revenue adjustments, you know, is yet to be the law. The president said we will wait uh, to see what the constitutional review we, we look like. Not really should have taken it to the National Assembly and see if we can make some uh, but he said he will wait for the National Assembly uh, to conclude on the ongoing uh, constitutional amendment process and see if that will then uh, be adjusted or be accommodated in the ongoing exercise. I'm also very hopeful that we'll give more uh, power to the subnational and see significant improvement uh, in that regard. Quite interesting. But will it be fair for the you know, federal government to share about 33.3% you know, as proposed by the, by the new formula? Well, I, I think it's also going to have negative impact on federal government. And uh, whether it is fair or not is another conversation entirely. The truth is that the federation needs to come together. The ports that we are currently spending from is getting smaller and smaller by the day. We need to cook more uh, to prepare more soup. So loss of 1%, loss of 0.1%, we impact any institution. But we are saying that we are currently faced with security challenges, we are currently faced with infrastructural challenges, we are faced with power concerns, we are, we are faced with unemployment uh, concerns. And if you go to the, to the states, apart from Lagos and four other states uh, with the FCT, and uh, uh, most places people believe the only thing they live on is civil service. You hear them, we, it is Nigeria, we coin the word for a whole state, civil service state. So we need to see how states can encourage private sector to thrive, not just federal government. And you can look at what our foreign direct investment is saying. In the last report last year, you know, more than 20 states, more than 20 states did not attract one investment, one major investment from abroad to, 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 to the state. How will people get new jobs? And we have in all these states, higher institutions of learning, colleges of education, polytechnics, universities, and so on and so forth. So we're bringing out so-called graduates from these institutions, but we are not preparing for where they will work. But there is always the devil's workshop that is willing to employ people who are high do and, in, and uh, maybe indolent or not part time. That is why we need to give, it's a concern to federal government, no doubt, but this is a necessary pain so that we can improve the subnational for them to grow. But you know, it may be no pain at all if we can improve what we earn, if we improve what we generate, then we can say that yes, uh, even though it's, it has reduced to some extent, but the impact will not be as tremendous as we may be imagining. Yeah, but you know, talking about improving, you know, revenue at this point, there's been this, you know, debate, you know, saying, oh, it's a revenue problem. Some are saying, no, it's a spending problem. What do you think? Well, I think we have both problems. Uh, revenue problem is real. President Buhari, uh, when he laid the budget in 2018, was speaking to the members of National Assembly that the biggest challenge today is not who will win 2019 election. That was around November, December 2018, and the president was so correct. Because look at 2019, after the election, what, what was the impact? What helped us to have some growth in 2019 was the election spending. 
happened. After the election spending, COVID came in 2020, the economy went into negative recession 2021. We are trying to, 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 to come out of it. Even till now, the impact of, uh, of lockdown is very evident on our economy because unemployment figure, I see there, poverty rate is higher. So the challenge, one key challenge we have is revenue, no doubt. But spending is another, is another challenge. And where do, what do we spend on? A country that spends 70 percent and more on consumption should not be surprised why we are having huge unemployment huge poverty because what drives economy is not just uh, consumption it is investment so we continue to spend less and less on investment there are states that spend as high as 80 percent and they wonder why kidnapping banditry while a sit at home order are ravaging the whole place because there are there is no there is no sufficient thing citizens of those states can say uh, that this is what government has done for us. So as much as it's important for us to end insecurity, you cannot do, you cannot end insecurity without solving basic uh, economic challenges that we have. And they are real. So all of us are, ba are battling economic insecurity. All Niger most Nigerians. Then we now have people that are battling with uh, guns and uh, machetes coming from insurgents, terrorists, bomb blasts, and so on and so forth. But all of us have a fair share of insecurity, whether the real insecurity in terms of life and property or economic insecurity. So how do we spend money? And this is very important for all government, federal, um, uh, say, state, and local. At least 50% of what spendings must go into capital. That's one. Two, borrowings. Because that's the option. <laughs> borrowing. Government quickly, oh, let's go borrow, let's go borrow. We are getting close to 40 trillion. And I wonder, uh, government is saying we are spending this thing, uh, we are spending it on good things, we are constructing roads, we are doing that. My concern is this. When you look at our borrowing and what we generate from oil, when we were much younger, we heard that Nigeria flows with milk and honey. Some of the milk that we talk about is the oil in Niger Delta. If money we are borrowing now surpasses that of Niger Delta in terms of revenue, because we now hear from authorities that over 80% of the oil are being stolen, or they are being stolen even as we speak today, is that not a major concern? So if you continue to embark on a journey that seems not to give you a sufficient return, then should we continue to uh, fire further? You know, on that journey, because to my own understanding, we continue to increase um, our service. Service to GDP, I mean, service to debt service to revenue. It's getting worse by the day. IMF is warning us, World Bank is warning us. A number of countries that have not even won Nigeria are not saying, hey, guys, you need to be courteous. You need to take care. This is getting worse. But government is saying, this perhaps is the only option we have. My concern is that I think our government needs to become more innovative. And this is a uh, thing you and your colleagues, you know, we, we've seen your media as one of the credible ones. You need to ask this politician. Yeah, we know you have all the political strategy, but how would you do it? How would you generate revenue? How would you reduce borrowing? How would you readjust spending? If they can answer the questions to, the, to convince Nigeria, then we can know that the next round of election will not just be another set of having politicians that will dash money around, and at the end of the day, for another four or eight years, we'll be suffering. That is the how. That's the $1 million question yes. at this how? point. How? Anyway, you know, we've seen, you know, states, uh, we've, we've trying to find out how states can actually generate you know, more revenue at, at this point, because you see some of these states, they have resources, but yet they're still very poor. And I'm wondering, how can these states actually, you know, generate revenue at this point? Well, my favorite book says, the labor of the fool, we read them, because they don't know the way to the market. If you are a chief executive in the state, you are, quote, and unquote, a chief economist of that state. So we have said, I was with one of the chief executives uh, in the state, and he said, oh, they are not generating so much in IGR. And I said, well, have been to your state and all I've seen is wealth. Whether you are making money from this wealth is a different issue entirely. And he said, oh, it's going to take time. I said, see, everybody in your state is making calls. I said, from the time I've been picked at the airport till now, everyone I've seen have been on their phones. How much comes to your pocket, Mr. Governor? Which is a question that the executive is wondering, so how do we make money? Again, how? Our politicians, and, and I, I think it's something we should consider. When we have chief executive, when our people have chosen their leaders, whether rightly or wrongly, it doesn't matter. We need to train them 
on how to make money for the state, not for their personal not for, for the, not for their personal pocket this time. Because if we don't, it will come back to hurt us. There is an how to generate money in the state. And I've said on your show before that I don't think state governors cumulatively, I mean states subnational at the state level, should do anything less than 50, I mean 5 trillion naira in revenue. I don't think they should do that. Because when you look at the telco sector, we have individual companies even declaring trillions and trillions in revenue and in profit. Whether that is official or not is another, is another conversation. But there is something Lagos State seems to have done. There is something a few other states are doing. I understand that Lagos uh, warehouses headquarters of several institutions. But apart from, apart from warehousing them, we knew a particular year where state Lagos was going to solve suffer from revenue uh, for poor revenue generation. Then Lagos put think tanks together to help think of how do we then generate this money. Lagos did not just become conscious that we have all these headquarters, you know, all around us, but they realized that we have a few things that we could do. There is no place in Nigeria where what state we generate in terms of IGR should be less than what they will spend, at least on their uh, recurrent expenditure. But that's not what we have. So a lot of revenue are there. States, governors, and maybe their commissioners, the commissioner of finance here and there, they just need to get serious to see government business as a major business in which they can encourage private sector to help them get the jobs, I mean, to, to pair them with investment. When you have more private sector with investment, the first thing that happens is that they are going to pay corporate income tax, which goes to federal government. They are going to be paying VAT, because when people buy from them, they charge VAT, which goes to federal, local, and, uh, and state. And more importantly, they will pay, they will collect taxes from the employees. And that is a lot of revenue for, for states in that regard. So we need to look at all of these things. What the about resources? Rents, grants, and all of those things are the things that goes there. When it comes to natural resources, a different conversation entirely. Because I see, feel like their hands are tied, you know, when it comes to that. I really don't think so. I, I, their hands might appear tired, but what is the effort that has been made? You know, even the states that shares the same political party, uh, the same political party with the government at the center, they also suffer. We know, we see them in the north, we see them in the west, we see them in the east, we see them even uh, uh, in the south, all over Nigeria. It is because those at the ends of affairs must not see Abuja money as go-to money. They must understand that what we help them is not the resources that is underneath their foot, but the resources that is in their brains. So when the person at the ends of affairs does not value what is the content of the brain of individuals in the state, then the next thing they can look at and looking up to the brain and looking up above, they will be looking under their foot. And under their foot has lag. Before you start extracting, is subject to banditry. We've seen what happened in Zamfara State, for instance. And we have seen what is happening in a few other states, but I will not mention them, where even Munak are involved directly in, uh, in, in, in illegally uh, extracting natural resources from our country. So it's a, big con it's a big concern, and I hope that authorities will do the right thing in no time. Right, and you know, obviously with the war in Ukraine, we've seen uh, fears now for a, a, a global food uh, crisis actually looming, and you know, this is coming at a time where most African countries are actually, you know, already feeling the, the, the pinch of all of this with rising energy costs. What is, what for you is the realistic uh, way, you know, right now for the government to tackle this major issue globally with geopolitical tension? Well, for me, I believe Nigeria has competitive cost advantage over a lot of countries in some items, which includes wheat. Wheat will grow in Nigeria between three to four months. We have a lot of areas, especially uh, the core north and the north central, where wheat will grow easily. But, you know, people need direction. People need coordination. We cannot allow just individual farmers that we don't have numbers, we don't have data to go and gr to go just grow wheat or other agro uh, pro outputs or produce that we need as a country. And I have recommended to government, see, if you can guarantee security, every year, every time, we have more than 250,000 coppers. Where are they? What are they doing? We also have research institutes and so on and so forth, professors, doctors, and lecturers, and technical people, even at agri research institutes here and there all over the country. Why can't we create farm villages or farm settlements where we have coppers with adequate security in these areas and look at things that we import the most for food, 
basic concern and make them available. You are doing two things by, taking such, by making such policy. Private sector will now be guaranteed of input to their machines. That will grow investment in the country. Foreign direct investment will come, local direct investment will grow. Then unemployment figure at 33.1%, according to, of the labor force, by the way, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, will reduce significantly. See, for every country that the highest population in a region or in a continent, what comes first? Is factory. Government must do our part, and what is the part? Make power available, improve other infrastructure. But factory will come first when all of these things has been done. So much uh, to unpack there, and uh, obviously we're in a point. We're at a point where revenue is uh, is quite uh, needed, but also spending. You know, at this point, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Laje. Thank you so much, uh, senior economist, SPM professionals. Always great having your insight on the program.